Welcome back to Guns.com, everybody. My name is Seth Rogers. I'm joined today by the wilderness woman herself, Kristen Alberts, and this is Bucking Out, where we're learning to deer hunt. Kristen, thank you. Thank you for having me. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an advanced hunter, there's always something that we can learn. And I hope that Seth and I, on our journey of deer hunting, can share that with you. I've never <laughs> been deer hunting, and that's kind of a mortal sin in Wisconsin, isn't it? It is, and I am so excited that you've decided to take that journey, and I can't wait to be along for the ride. Well, I couldn't have asked for a better guide today, and so I think the first thing that we need to talk about is, what is the smallest caliber that I can shoot a deer with? Can I go 22 long rifle, or what's, where am I going Absolutely. with Absolutely, we have to start with safety and legality anytime that we start our deer hunting journey. And we're hunting obviously in Wisconsin, so small, the smallest caliber we can go with is a 223. But just okay. because it's the smallest legal doesn't mean it's probably the best choice, sure. but it, you're smart to start with the legal choices right from the bat. I see we have a lot of rifles on the table in front of us. Let's talk about the differences of some of them and why a beginner would maybe want to choose one versus the other. Absolutely. We have a mix of calibers. We have bolt actions, lever guns, a semi-auto and a modern sporting rifle platform and everything from a 243 to a seven millimeter Magnum. So you have a wide variety to try out for your first adventure into deer hunting. And I think you'll find something that you like. There's a variety of different barrel lengths here. How much does that play a factor into accuracy and the beginner's choice for choosing a rifle? Absolutely, and that's a very good question. And you'll see when we look at some of these rifles, we have heavier barrels that are longer, some are threaded. We have some pencil weight barrels that are shorter. And that's going to play a factor if you're shooting longer distances and doing target shooting. But when you're a beginning deer hunter, I want to make sure that the rifle fits you and we can work around those other factors without a doubt. So what would make a rifle comfortable for me? Absolutely. Great question. If that rifle fits you and you're comfortable with it, you're going to be a confident shooter. So we talk about a couple different things there. We're going to talk about caliber selection, depending on how much recoil that you want to have out of that caliber. We're also talking about the length of pull or the length of that stock to make sure when you put it up that you're comfortable in how it fits. There's a comb height adjustment on some rifles and we want to make sure your eye is in line with the scope if you're using a scope. So ultimately what we want you to do or any new shooter is to get into a gun shop or handle different rifles from other hunters. They'll be more than welcome to let you shoulder their rifle and see what is comfortable for you. So should we pick these up and start taking a look at them? Absolutely. That's right. the best thing to do. This is the Sauer, right? In the 6.5 PRC? Yep, that is a Sauer field shoot rifle. Now this is a heavy rifle. Yes. It is. That's more of a target or a bench rifle. Okay. But if we're going to be hunting in a deer stand, that's certainly something that we can take up. And you tuck that nice and tight into your shoulder. And we can adjust that comb height to get your eye in line with the scope. What is this one right here? This is a Weatherby Vanguard. And that has a thumb hole laminate stock. So you'll see that's going to fit your hand a little bit differently as you put that up. Yeah, and that particular that's... rifle is a 243, so that's going to be a lighter recoiling caliber, but something still very capable of handling white-tailed deer. Now you'll check out the AR. Yeah. This is a CMMG right. Resolute in 350 Legend, which is kind of the hot topic right now for deer hunting in that straight wall casing. That feels really nice too. And we have that six position buttstock there, so you can really get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then we go from ultra modern to old school. Old school. With one of my favorites in the Savage 99 lever action. This is a cool gun right here. And this is. is from the guns.com vault, right? It is. There's some major cool factor to those old 99s. So you'll see we have a period scope on that one. So it's maybe not quite as clear as some of the newer optics. But not, not quite as clear as the other ones. I do notice I feel like I'm much closer to the scope with this gun. And you very well might be. That's a little bit shorter length of pull on that rifle and the scope is also sitting further back. Now I noticed obviously on the AR-15 we can adjust the stock here. Absolutely. It looks like there's some adjustment maybe on this Sauer as well. Not so much on the Savage 99. Not so much here, but if a shooter falls in love with this particular rifle and you're feeling there's not enough length of pull, we can add and a spacer into that or we can put a rubber butt pad on it that'll give you a little bit more okay. length. So there's things that we can do to fit the shooter to the rifle as well. All right, let's move on. This is a, this is a classic rifle right here, right? This is this the Marlin. One of my favorites, yeah. This is the Marlin Dark Series in a 4570. So that is a definite big game rifle and would be definitely very potent on deer. Then we'll move to a classic bolt action here in the Remington 700 in a seven millimeter Magnum. Now you have the stainless barrel, a nice proven bolt action. Well, this one feels really good too, just the where it's, where it's shouldering. I feel like the comb is right in where my cheek should be. Yeah, it looks like it fits you well. Yeah, that's a nice rifle right there. And last, what is the last the one The last one here? is the Benelli Lupo. 
which is Benelli's actual first bolt action rifle. And there you'll notice when you cheek that, you'll feel a soft touch to your cheek. They actually have a soft comb. And that also has spacers so we can fit your length of pull. All right, Kristen, so I noticed that we have a lot of different actions here. Mm -hmm. We have our bolt action, we have our semi-auto, we have a lever action, couple lever actions here. How much is that playing a factor into how someone chooses their first rifle? That's a very good question too, and we're missing, we don't have a single shot here or a pump, and a lot of folks like to start their young shooters out with a single shot, and that's the way I learned. You learn to make that first shot count. You can't rely on that next shot from the semi-auto or from a bolt action. But any way that you learn, you just want to be familiar with that platform that you've chosen. Sure, and you just brought up a good point, which is a follow-up shot. Mm -hmm. How important is that? I mean, really, I should be hitting the deer, getting Absolutely. it down on the first shot, right? Yep, we want to spend enough time on the range that you're confident when you pull the trigger, you're right on target. But even when you do everything right, it may not work out perfectly. So you want to be familiar with that platform. If you have a bolt, you're going to cycle that and be ready for the next shot. If you have a lever, you'll run the lever. And with a semi-auto, obviously, you have the next shot at your ready. And obviously, with the semi-auto, that's going to be your quickest way to get a follow-up shot on target. What would be the next quickest? It's really just a matter of practice. I grew up with the bolt action, so I'm comfortable with working that. A lot of people like the lever actions for a quick follow-up shot. So I've noticed that all of these rifles have scopes on them. Is they that do. something that you have to have to hunt for deer? Absolutely not. And in fact, I think it's a great idea for new shooters to start out by learning iron sights. And a lot of hunters will start by teaching their kids with iron sights because it's a great way to learn and it's a great backup. If something goes wrong with your scope, like on this Marlin or the Savage that you see have the iron sights, you can pop that scope off in the field and know that you still have a nice aiming solution. All right, Chris, I've noticed that some of these rifles have threaded barrels on them. How much is that playing a factor into someone picking a rifle for deer hunting? Do people use suppressors when deer hunting? Yeah, that's a great observation, and it's a nice thing to have. When you have the threaded barrel, you have the option of a suppressor or a muzzle brake. And we're in Wisconsin where hunting with a suppressor is legal. Nice. So that's a nice option, especially for perhaps a recoil-sensitive shooter, because sure. it's been proven that the sound is as scary as the actual recoil itself. So if you can take some of that out, it's certainly going to help the perceived recoil. Sure. Speaking of recoil, how much recoil is too much recoil? Well, that's a good question <laughs> too. And the answer is really a personal one. I don't like getting kicked around any more than the next guy. And I know it's kind of a macho thing to do with deer hunting that you can take the recoil and sure. you'll do it without a shirt on or whatever, but <laughs> you have to enjoy shooting your rifle. Yeah. And when you shoot at a deer, you'll never notice the recoil but we want to have a low enough recoil that you're going to be comfortable shooting on the range and spending the time to get confident and comfortable with your rifle. So we'll find out what you like. Have you shot a lot of rifles before? I have not shot many rifles before, so this is definitely a brand new learning experience for me. Okay, well we're not going to put you through the macho test and throw you into the 7 mag right <laughs> away. We're going to start smaller with a 243 and work our way up. All right, Krista, I promise I'm going to keep my shirt on the whole time, okay? <laughs> I don't need to be macho about hey, this. That's a great general rule of thumb and something that we'll stick to today. <laughs> but you know what? The main thing is we're out here and we're having fun and that's what deer hunting is all about. Absolutely. Now the last thing I've noticed about some of these rifles is that there definitely seems to be some customization in some of these right out of the box. How many rifles can you get a customized deer hunting setup right out of the box? Is that something that's important for a beginner? It can be if it helps that rifle fit the beginner better, especially with youth rifles. We'll see a lot like the Mossberg Patriot and the sure. Winchester XPR and the Savage makes adjustable combs and adjustable length of pull. Okay. And that can help if you're buying a rifle for say your 10 year old daughter mm -hmm. and you expect her to grow into that rifle and have it for a number of years, you yeah. can add those length of pull spacers and have it fit the shooter. Is it something that you need to be successful? Absolutely not. Sure. People were hunting with the Savage 99 for 100 years and taking deer, so. As a beginner, Mm -hmm. How far should I be shooting? Should I be trying to get that 500 yard shot or should I be <laughs> keeping it a little closer? No, definitely we want to keep those expectations to a reasonable level and I know a lot of people think that in order to be a great shooter you have to be able to take that 500 or 1000 yard shot and that's absolutely not the case. For myself personally, the joy of hunting is really in getting closer to the animal. That's where yeah. you're going to get in touch with nature and learn to be a good sure. hunter. Yeah. But what we want to do is get you on the range and find out where you're comfortable. If 100 yards is where you like to be, then that's where we're going to try to get you in range of a deer. If you're comfortable at 200, we know we have a little bit more wiggle room. But there's no right or wrong way to do it as long as we're ethical, responsible hunters. Perfect. Well, let's get these guns on the range, see which one is the winner for me.
and then hopefully I can take a deer hunt in and get a deer. Absolutely, I would love to see you get a deer. Thanks for joining us today, I'm bucking out. I'm really excited to get these rifles on the range, see how they fire, see how they function, and if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. We got plenty of great videos coming to you, more bucking out, more deer hunting, and we'll be back with another video very soon.